Hello YouTubers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be reviewing Fantasy. Now Fantasy was put out by AEG. Its subtitle is The Game of Heroic Dice and Slice. Now, uh, this game at its core is a press-your-luck dice game, but it's it's got more to it than that. They do borrow mechanics for, and um, uh, features from other, other types of games. In addition to being a press-your-luck dice game, it's also a bit of a uh, party-building game, an adventuring game. It's not really a deck-building game. You build a party drawn from a common deck of up to five heroes, at any given time that you then need to activate activate with your resources and your resources are the dice that you use during the press your luck dice portion you then use the heroes that you've activated to attack monsters and you're competing to attack monsters to get the most points now the game is listed as a game for two to five players uh, it is listed as lasting for about 30 to 40 minutes which is about right and it says ages 14 and up now I don't exactly agree with that last part of the 14 and up again if you have children in your house who play games with you or if you are a child in the house who plays a lot of games yourself and you're under 14 but you get games routinely that say that they're for ages 14 and up this is probably okay for you too so I first tried this game at AEG Game Night at Gen Con, and then uh, both my wife and I liked it, so we immediately purchased it the very next day at Gen Con. Um, the, the game has a, a really interesting artwork style. I liken it to as if Disney artists had illustrated Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of what I mean. Uh, here is the Wicked Spinner. This is a bad guy card. Now it is a giant spider, obviously, but again, it, it looks like a giant monster spider illustrated by Disney. Uh, here is a Toxic Slime. And here is a Succubus who very much reminds me of a Wicked Queen from a Disney princess film. Uh, now that's not a bad thing. I mean, like I said, if they still have kind of an edge to them. Uh, it's just, it's just they have the kind of that cartoony Disney style. Another thing that they remind me of a little bit is the old Dragon Slayer. If anyone remembers the Dragon Slayer video game and cartoon from back in the '80s. Now, here's some of the heroes' artwork to look at. Uh, here's an alchemist, uh, a little reminiscent of Orko from He-Man. There, I kind of like that. Uh, this is the sergeant who is quite useful. A nice uh, Steamosaur here, and a couple more here, a Scout and a Pyromancer. So the game comes in a, in a nice box with a nice plastic insert that helps you to organize all of your cards. It also is a bit generous by giving you this nice little um, velvety dice bag. This is one of those occasions where uh, the game makers did not need to include this at all, and they did just to be generous to us, the consumers. Uh, the dice don't need to be passed around the table in the bag in any way. It's just a fun little addition. Here's some of the, the standard D6 dice. So, that's a quick look at the game box and the components. Let's head to the table. And I will show you how the game is played. Okay, so here we see the setup for fantasy. As you can see, out here in the middle of the table, we have stacks of monsters. Now, the top card on the stack of each monster is face up, all the rest are face down, and therefore unknown. The monsters are attacking the village. This is the village deck right here. This is the treasure deck, which you get to draw from if your monster has a treasure symbol on it, which, of course, is a treasure chest there. Over here is the hero and event deck. Uh, they are mixed together, and you get a card, uh, a, excuse me, you get a hand of five cards from that deck. Here is my hand right over here. In addition, we have uh, two kinds of tokens. This is the last player token. And these are the Doom tokens. And then, of course, we have the dice. So to set up the game, you start by separating out the different kinds of monsters. There are three kinds of monsters. You have level one monsters, which are these white-bordered beasties here. And I'm just going to pull up one of these decks to show you. 
that at the bottom we have level 2 and boss monsters. Now this is a level 2 monster. It's got a gray border. And this is a boss monster. It looks like a level 2, but it has the important difference of saying boss monster on it. So, what happens is you equally separate the level 2s into 5 stacks, and you shuffle one boss monster into each stack. You then shuffle the level 1s and deal them out evenly to the top of each stack of level 2s and boss monster. Then you flip face up the top monster on each stack, and these are your monster stacks for the game. You then, of course, shuffle up your village deck, your uh, treasure deck, and your hero and event deck over, or, uh, excuse me, hero and action deck over here. You roll to randomly decide who goes first. Everyone goes clockwise from the first player, and you mark the last player with the last player token. Now, this is important because everyone needs to get an equal number of turns. So, if the end of game round is triggered, everyone still gets a turn until you make it to the last player. That is, of course, unless the last player is the one who triggers the end of game round, in which case theirs is the last turn and the game is done. Now, here's how the game works. Once you've got all this set up and everybody's got their five cards and you're ready to play, the first thing you do is you do your action phase where you can play heroes and action cards. So here's my hand of cards. And as you can see, my hand of cards is currently made up of four heroes and one action card. Now, during my action phase, uh, now, of course, I don't normally show everybody these, but I'm doing this for educational purposes. During my turn, I may play two heroes and two action cards. You don't have to play that many. Of course, in this case, I don't even have two action cards. But you may play up to that many. So, let's say I were to play the sergeant on my first turn and I were to play the Pyromancer on my first turn. Then I want to play Negotiations as an action. Now Negotiations says move a horde stack to any position in the horde. Now there are both actions and uh, characters, uh, adventurers that you can use, heroes, to move horde stacks. And why is this important? Let me show you. If you take a look at the starting horde stacks, you'll notice that there is a shrewd Rakshasa out here. Now, the shrewd Rakshasa has a power level of 7. It's rather difficult to kill. The toxic slime, on the other hand, only has a power level of 3. And the thing is, it's very important to kill the monster on the top of the very first stack, because that is the monster that's about to attack the village. If the Rakshasa was right here, let's say, let me swap these, and I can't defeat that power level 7, and on my first turn I certainly can't, well, that swapping of stacks would allow me to pull the Rakshasa stack out of the way, move the Toxic Slime, who is much easier to kill over, and move the Rakshasa space back. Now, I can very easily kill him. You see, if you don't kill the monster who is in the first place, he will raid the village, and you must take the top village card, which in this case is negative three victory points. And that's bad. So to take a look at the monsters, here's what you're looking at. You're looking at power level, which is how much it takes to kill them, which corresponds to the power level of your hero cards. If you see over here, I have a power level two and a power level six hero card, but as I'll show you in a moment, this power level six is not a guaranteed that I'm gonna get him activated. Then back over here, you will see on the bottom right of these cards, that is the victory points you get for killing them. So even though the Rakshasa is much more powerful, you, you can see that he is also worth a lot more victory points than that Toxic Slime. Then there are two major abilities we'll touch on in a moment, which are Ambush and Counterattack. So, I've got some heroes, I played a, a, an action. What am I going to do next? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dice. Now you start with a five dice pool, and you get up to two re-rolls total unless you have abilities that let you do more than that. So in this case, I'm going to roll my five dice, and let's have a look. Well, let's see. We've got three threes, which are nice. We've got a five and a four. 
So I'm going to hold on to a four and a three because they will help me with the pyromancer. And then I'm going to take the other two threes. And if you see here, the sergeant has two X's. Now what that means is they can be any number, but they have to both be the same number. No matter how many X's you have, they have to all be the same number. So I'm going to take these and immediately activate my sergeant. Now in activating my sergeant, he says, choose a hero. They cost one die less to activate this turn. So obviously I'm going to choose my pyromancer who I already have two dice for. So now all I need to do is get that last die to come up either a one or a two, and because he costs one die less, I'm good. I'll be able to use him. So let's see. No, for the second, for the first reroll, and oh, I got it. Luck. Luck is a big part of this game. So there we go. Now the strategy, which is also a big part of this game, paid off. I had a guy who helped me to, to activate a guy who was much harder to activate. So now I can activate all of them, and the Pyromancer has the ability that all my other heroes get plus one strength this turn. So actually, I will be able to destroy the Rakshasa this turn, because yeah, I have a total of six, seven, eight, plus one from the Pyromancer, making him plus one stronger, nine power. Now the way, what you do with that is you come over here to the monsters, and you can destroy nine power worth of monsters. So in this case, uh, I decided not to go after the Rakshasa. I, I had moved him back, so I'm going to stick with that. So I got three for the, the Toxic Slime. And then I have four for the Wicked Spinner. And then I can do something. Uh, I, can, I can actually blindly attack the top card here. I can flip it over and see if I'm able to beat it. If I'm able to beat it, I can take it, which in this case I need a level two or less. But if I don't, it just stays there. But it doesn't counterattack me, and I'll get to that in a moment, if it has counterattack. So in this case, it is a three. I don't defeat it. It just stays there. So now these two cards which I got go over to my win pile and give me a total of five victory points, which is a good start. So here is my win pile now next to my play area. Now, none of the monsters I killed had counterattack. If they did like the Rock Shasa over here with counterattack four, after I defeat them, they do four damage to my party, which means I have to kill a minimum of four power worth of guys. So if I had killed the Rock Shasa, and I come over to my party, I have a power level six and a power level two. Now, killing the power level two would still mean that there's a minimum of two power level I have to kill, so I'd have to kill both of them. So if I had killed the Rakshasa, I would have had to kill my mighty Pyromancer, which would have been a bit of a blow to my party here. It would have been a problem. So I didn't kill the Rakshasa. I wanted to keep both guys alive and build up to a larger party before I take on bigger guys like this. My action card gets discarded because I don't need it anymore. I check if I got any treasure. Nope, no treasure tokens on these cards here. Um, then the horde phase happens. The first thing in the horde phase is, is there a face-up card over here? If there is, he gets to attack your town. And like I said, you get those negative point cards, but there is none, so that's good. Then ambush happens. I managed to kill all the guys with ambush. Now the way ambush works is, at the end of the round, you add up the total points in ambush, and it does that much damage to your party. So ambush is a little different than counterattack because you have to attack the counterattack guys from the hit you. Whereas you, with the ambush, the ambush bad guys, you have to leave them there. Then, uh, once I'm done with that, I draw, uh, I flip up face up all of the stacks who don't have a face up monster, and I draw four cards here from the deck. I add them to my hand. And then I discard down to five cards. So now I'm going to take a look at my hand and say, well, what do I really need? What do I want to add to my party? What is going to combo with the guys in my party? What abilities are going to work really well in the future? And I will hold on to those, and I will discard the rest. Now, once I'm done with that, it is the next player's turn. And they do the same again. They, they play their, their, their adventures. They play their... Uh, their action cards, and they try to take out monsters, and they're probably 
uh, as turns go on, going to lose some of their heroes, but they get to replace them pretty quickly, so it's not that big a deal. I just want to show you what uh, it looks like when you get a guy who has a treasure. Oh, here we go. The Orc Mage here has a treasure listed. That means you get to draw from the treasure deck when you defeat him. Uh, now, the treasure deck has two possible abilities. There's a level one ability, which is if you defeated a level one guy and he had the single treasure chest on him, you get to that ability and you immediately slip it under one of your hero cards. Now your hero has that ability. If you killed a level two who had the double treasure chest symbol, you get the level two ability instead and again, just immediately slip it under one of your guys that you're not planning to kill with damage from counterattack or ambush because you want to hold on to that one who has a nice snazz and new ability. In this case, the level 1 ability is that if you activate this hero, you get an extra die this turn. Very useful, because 6 dice is better than 5. The other one is if you activate it, you get shield 1 and an extra roll and an extra die this turn, which is amazing. Now, what does that mean? That means you get a third reroll, and shield 1 means you automatically get to ignore 1 point of counterattack and 1 point of ambush for the entire turn while, while this particular hero that this is on is activated. So that is very useful for reducing or ignoring counterattack and ambush. If you can build up quite a bit of shield, you can actually ignore quite a bit of counterattack and ambush. So, how does the game end? Towards the bottom of the deck, again, if you recall, there are boss monsters mixed in with the level 2s. So in this particular stack, let's find our boss monster. Here he is. We have... Grazer of Souls looks like a Minotaur. Now, Grazer of Souls is a power level 12. He's actually a low-level boss monster. There's much higher. And um, he gives 12 victory points. He has counterattack 1, ambush 1, and he is a boss monster. Now, if, you, if he comes up and someone kills him, you get to flip one of the Doom Tokens over. Here are the Doom Tokens. You flip it to the other side to show the little dragon symbol. Now, once all three Doom Tokens are flipped over like so, from killing three boss monsters, you have just started the final round. No matter whose turn it is, all that has to happen is whoever has the last player token has to finish their turn, and the final round is over. So, if the third token gets flipped on the last player player's turn, that's it. That's the end of the game at the end of their round. If the last player token gets flipped on the first player's turn, everybody else still gets another turn before the game ends. Once the game ends... To decide who wins is very simple. You add up the points of all the monsters you killed. And that's basically how the game plays. Okay, so that was a look at how to play fantasy. Now, a couple quick notes. A uh, couple things I forgot and one thing I misspoke uh, on on the rules. Uh, but it was a nice take and I, and I had to, happened to get very lucky with the dice and didn't want to do another take. So I apologize, but one thing I did get wrong on the rules is that during the horde phase at the end of your round, you flip all the top cards up before checking ambush. You first, while leaving them down, see if there's a face up monster to destroy your town, if to damage your town, and if there's not, then you flip them all face up and then you check the number of ambush. So there is a bit of, um, mystery involved as to whether or not and how much ambush you may be facing at the end of your turn. Uh, a couple other things I want to quickly note is that you have a maximum of five heroes in your party and once you start blindly attacking face down monsters in one of your stacks you can only do that and only do it for that stack until you run out of power. You, you can't start doing that and then go back to attacking face up monsters that are on the table. So that, that's the entirety of how to play fantasy, heroes, hordes, and <clears throat> hordes and heroes, and uh, now I'm going to tell you what I think of it. Now, I like Press Your Luck Dice games. I'm a big fan of them. Um, I like them because they have a, a very nice um, mixture of both strategy and luck. You can, just, you can look at the dice on the table and you can, you can figure out the odds of getting what you need and you can decide based on that whether or not to roll again. But of course, intrinsically, there is a fair amount of luck involved and therefore there are those, those incredible feeling turns of, of, of snatching victory from the draws of defeat. And that can be a lot of fun. I mean, these aren't 100% great for, for very serious tactical tournaments, but 
but they're just great fun for sitting around the table and playing with your family or having a beer and board game night, which I'm a big fan of. So, uh, <clears throat> the game plays well. There, I found no ambiguities in the rules that, that, that made me confused. There's a nice fact at the end of the rules that helps you in case you are having difficulty with any of the rules. Um, I find that anyone who has had any experience at all with um, living card games or um, the old collectible card game style or, or expandable card games and understands the way combos work, combinations of different effects and cards, will take to the combos and the different uh, heroes very quickly. Other people may take a little more time getting used to it. A good friend of mine who was never into those sorts of games played this game with me and she took a little longer to get used to the combos. But once she got going, she liked it and she said she would try it again. Um, she didn't like it as much as I did. I liked it. I like it a lot. I mean, I, I clicked with this particular game very quickly. And on BoardGameGeek.com, I gave this game 8 out of 10 stars, which means I very much enjoyed it and would recommend it. And I am recommending this game to you. Uh, if you like press your luck dice games if you like adventure type games where you get to build a party of heroes and fight monsters if you like both of those if you think the artwork is really cool buy this game this is definitely a very fun game um i think that uh aeg has a winner on their hands with this one i i, I very much enjoyed it but let's get a second opinion lynn out of 10 stars, how many stars would you give to Fantasy? 8. Oh, 100% agreement there. She gave it 8 out of 10 stars. I gave it 8 out of 10 stars. So, there you have it. It is a solid 8. Oh, yeah. And one more thing. I almost forgot to remind you. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, please, please, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, that's what keeps me going. Likes and subscriptions. Also, um, comment down below if you think I got anything else wrong that I forgot to fix at the end. Uh, any suggestions, things you would like to see in future reviews, or games you would like to see me review, feel free to comment down below. Um, and until next time, game on.